Good morning and happy Sabbath. Welcome to the early teen Sabbath school class at Daughter of Zion Seventh-day Adventist Church. Our lesson this morning is entitled Death by Deception, and it can be found in the Bible in 2 Samuel chapter 11. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for waking us up this morning and for bringing us safely, safely through another week. And now as we learn more about this story found in 2 Samuel chapter 11, please help us to understand, but more importantly, help us to apply it to our lives so that it will help us to get closer to you and to be more like you. Bless us now as we spend time together. Amen. All right. So our power text is found in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 22, and it says, the Lord detests lying lips, but he delights in a people who are trustworthy. Our PowerPoint says, we treat others with respect by being honest and not taking advantage of them. And so young people, when we look at this lesson, we are going to be looking at some important things. In order to share God's love and grace with our community, we treat each other with honesty and respect. So this is a negative example of what deception does to a community, this story is. So I'm hoping that you are going to be in tune with what we're um, learning in this story. So the objectives for this lesson include, know that God is honored when we respect other people, Feel impressed to honor and value the rights and freedoms of others and respond by choosing to help their friends and relatives. So we want to be upstanding, upright citizens in our communities. Okay, so what are some of the issues, again, that result from selfishness? What helps you always treat others respectfully and kindly? Well, let's find out if there was respect and kindness in this story. It was springtime, a time when kings went off to war. Israel was at war with the Ammonites, while the army commander, Joab, and all the forces were laying siege to the city, King David returned to Jerusalem. One evening, David could not sleep. So he got up and walked around on the roof of his palace. Across the way, he saw a beautiful woman. He wanted to know more about her. So he sent a servant to inquire. The news came back that she was Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah, one of David's bravest and most faithful soldiers. David sent a messenger to get her. She came. The king spent time with her, then sent her home. Before long, Bathsheba sent a message to David. She was pregnant. David was in trouble. He knew he had done wrong. The law said that death was the punishment for a convicted adulterer. Instead of admitting his sin and turning to God, David continued to try to do things his own way. He decided on something that he thought would help him to get out of this mess. He brought Uriah back from the battle so that he could spend some, time, some nights at home with his wife. Maybe no one would ever know that the child was David's. Hmm, such deception. David's deceitful plan was put into action with a message to Joab. Send Uriah the Hittite to me, he said. When Uriah arrived at the court, David pretended that he wanted a special report on the war. Uriah gave his report. Then David encouraged him to go home to rest and to see his wife. But Uriah didn't go home. 
He stayed outside the palace with the servants and palace guards. When news of this got back to David, he asked, haven't you just come from a military campaign? Why didn't you go home? Uriah, this loyal soldier, this brave um, battleman, he said to King David, the ark and Israel and Judah are staying in tents and my commander Joab and my Lord's men are camped in the open country. How could I go to my house? As surely as you live, I will not do such a thing. Well, David tried again, young people, to get Uriah to go home. Stay here one more day, and tomorrow I will send you back, David insisted. So Uriah stayed for another day in the city and accepted the invitation to eat with the king in the royal palace. During the meal, Uriah got drunk, but he didn't go home the second night either. David's deceitful plan had not worked. In the morning, this is so sad, young people, but in the morning, David wrote a message to Joab and sent it to the camp with Uriah. And this is what the message said. Put Uriah out in front where the fighting is fiercest. Then withdraw from him so he will be struck down and die. And that can be found in 2 Samuel chapter, uh, chapters 11 through 14. Well, jo Joab did exactly what he was told to do. While the Israelite army had the city under siege, he put Uriah where the fighting was heaviest. Several men were killed, including Uriah. Once again, the message flew back to King David with a swift runner. It contained a full account of the battle. The messenger gave his message, all of it. He said, the men overpowered us and came out against us in the open, but we drove them back to the entrance of the city gate. Then the archers shot arrows at your servants from the wall, and some of the king's men died. Moreover, your servant Uriah the Hittite is dead. David sent a message back. Say this to Joab. Don't let this upset you. The sword devours one as well as another. Press the attack against the city and destroy it. Say this to encourage Joab, is what the messenger had to say. David thought he had covered up his sin. After a period of mourning, Bathsheba, after her period of mourning, she became David's wife. It was not one single bad decision that led to David's downfall. The journey that led him to defeat consisted of many small steps in the wrong direction. Instead of trusting completely in God, young people, King David gradually was drawn by the attractions of power as well as the sinful practice, practices and customs of surrounding nations. In place of humbly accepting God's leading in everything he did, David chose to rely on his own human wisdom and power. As a result, he separated himself from God, the only sure source of power. It's clear from the Bible that the thing David had done displeased the Lord. 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 27. In the beginning, young people, God created humankind in his image. Originally, it was natural for humans to obey God and to do only what was right, good and just. However, as a result of disobedience, sin came into our world, causing separation between us and God. And as a result of sin, the thoughts, the feelings, the impulses, the desires, the words, and the actions of all human beings were corrupted. The destiny of our world appeared hopeless. 
God, however, did not let us die in our sins. He sought us, found us, and he saved us. So young people, what a different course your life can take if you choose to be faithful to God, even in the smallest details of your life. Every day, we must work hard to make God happy with our praise, our problems, and our plans. So I hope this song encourages you to help God to be happy with everything that we do and say. Listen in. I know I want God to be pleased with my praise, young people, and I hope you want the same. If so, pray with me. Father, thank you for this story, which is or has arrested our attention that we need to make sure we stay in your will and in your way. Father, this was a senseless death by a person who you considered after your own heart. And how this could be done is because of the sinfulness of this world. So help us, Father God, to learn from this lesson, to be kind, to help others, and to show others that we are about doing right and pleasing you. Help us, Father God, to follow this story. And as we tune in next week to learn about David's fate, we ask that you will help us to ponder these thoughts. Help us to remember the deceitful things he did to an innocent bystander and help us to ask, Lord, if I am that way to help us to be better, help us to be more like you. Forgive us of our sins and give us a good rest of the day. In your name we do pray. Amen. All right. Thank you for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye-bye. <music>